And um, I wanted to ask you this. I didn't think of it till later, but I started thinking about this. Like when I finished the, you know, his collected works, I read this whole fucking thing, this big behemoth. Uh, parts of it extremely dry and hard to get through and then I was just thinking yeah like I don't think Keats is that good of a poet so uh, when I was th I was like man what made everybody love Keats so much what, what like cemented him in the canon because he was trashed at first by all the critics that mattered uh, especially Endymion uh, was considered like complete garbage by all the, lo the critics in like Ireland uh, or in Scotland and England at least and then um but I was just thinking, I was like, man, yeah, so he was friends with Wordsworth, and it's clear that, like, Wordsworth respected him. Like, they were, they, you know, the dinners and stuff they would have, you know, the drunken kind of conversations at night, you know, long into the night type thing, smoking, drinking. I was wondering, like, if Wordsworth was responsible for for kind of dragging Keats' legacy with him, since Wordsworth was probably the most influential not just, you know, uh, in poetic, but by the time, you know, he was, you know, as a poet laureate, he was the one that lived the longest. He became very influential in, you know, politics and, you know, just like the general upper classes kind of bullshit, you know, whatever that is kind of. Yeah, I guess I don't know the answer to that question. I didn't really look into it, but it would make sense. I mean, I can see how people would come back to the romantics and especially romantics like Keats of the second generation where a lot, like we see a lot of reference directly to poetry, to the poet's role, to like, you know, sort of sublime elements. So, but like not so much of like nature, but of poetry. Um, and I can see how like poets would come back to that. And how they would sort of be, you know, just self-involved enough <laughs> right. to be really deeply interested in this idea of, like, some sort of poet, philosopher type, but yeah. also, like, partier type. Right. And I don't really know enough about British history either, so... But just based on the time period, I mean, this was kind of the height of the British empire right like this was you know they were fucking everywhere uh <laughs> they were, yeah they were just expanding non-stop uh, before the crumbling in the 20th century but it's like yeah I, I don't know so if that has something to do with it like the kind of excesses you can have from that kind of um, i don't know but yeah and i guess we won't have an answer to that like this type of words worth like how much how much was words worth responsible for uh, you know, make kind of making sure Keats wasn't lost to the history books or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll never know. I, I'm not a, maybe some scholars that are that know all this shit will send us. Yeah, in. I'm sure <laughs> someone knows. I mean, he also had like a lot of friends that were important and who right. wrote to each other a lot. So I'm sure there were plenty of connections made there. You know, in like sort of the unearthing of whatever. Like if Shelley was one of like the. If Shelley was one of, like, the hottest, you know, the hottest guys around. Right. And if they were in any kind of way um, in contact. But also, like, all of the friends he had. Like, he was friends, you know, with the guy publishing the work of, like, other right. big names. Uh, like, there's just so much, I think, that could play into that. It's still how it works. I mean, that's still how the kind of, it's, you you know, we trace this back all the way. Like, yeah, kind of part of that class that published the magazines, the newspapers, and like would look at your shit. I don't know. 